When my best friend, when she got cancer, when she was diagnosed, I was actually in shock. And, and she was young and vibrant. We both were at that time. We were young and vibrant and with a huge part of, of our lives ahead of us. And I couldn't believe that she was diagnosed with an aggressive sarcoma growing in her chest. One day, you know, she, it seemed like she was fine one day, and then um, she was having difficulty breathing. She noticed she was having difficulty breathing one day when she was going up a flight of steps, and she <clears throat> felt it was unusual. She went for some tests, she went for a scan, and they found a tumor in her, in her chest. And they said it was fast growing and it was aggressive. Because the tumor was aggressive, they felt, the doctors and her husband felt that the treatment also needed to be really aggressive because they felt that they had to fight the tumor and the treatment had to work faster than the growth of the tumor. While she was going through this, um, I felt so much guilt for being the healthy one and there was, I couldn't do anything on my own because I felt guilty for, for leaving her. Like if I went out, if I had a good time, I just couldn't. I couldn't even have a good time. I couldn't go out with my friends. I couldn't go shopping without thinking of her lying in the hospital. Um, so I was feeling extremely, it, it was as though I may as, as well have been sick as well. So I would be with her at her side and watching her made me extremely fearful as well because I felt if this could happen to her, it could happen to me because we were like sisters, but we were the same age. And um, as I watched the, her go through the treatment, instead of seeing her heal, it felt like with every treatment she got worse. Um, and so my fear got even worse because I was not only scared of the illness, I was also scared of the treatment. So I started to obsess about cancer, about health and wellness. I thought I was obsessing about health. But here's where the fine line is. Many of us are, believe that we are obsessed about health, but in actuality, we're obsessing about illness. We're obsessing about not getting ill as opposed to <coughs> focusing on wellness. And do you remember I spoke about the flashlight in the warehouse? Instead of, fla instead of the flashlight focusing on what brings us joy, my flashlight was focused on illness, but in my head, I thought it was focused on health. I was also learning with the law of attraction that I needed to focus on what I wanted. So I focused on health with all my might. But that focus on health came from a fear of illness. And the more I focused, um, the more fearful I got because I was researching everything I could on cancer and how to prevent cancer. And as I was researching, I became obsessed with not getting cancer because I was watching my friend deteriorate. And I was getting more obsessed, but I was also getting very tired because I was with her so much of the time. And I, I would read things like, um, there is mercury in our fish and that causes cancer. There's fluoride in our water and that causes cancer. And there are hormones in our meat and our chicken and that causes cancer. There are hormones in, it, in our milk and that causes cancer. And so, and, and anyone relate about how much stuff you read has cancer, causes cancer? Yes. So I, one by one, I eliminated these things from my diet. I started to have a raw, vegan diet, a cancer prevention diet. I started to eat only organic. I would juice and I would uh, grow my own wheatgrass and I would juice every morning. I was obsessed with not getting cancer, absolutely obsessed. Um, and also, um, as I read all these things, 
I became so fearful that my world became smaller because there was so little I could do. And I was paranoid. We had put, so we started to put new water filters in our home. We started to get air purifiers. It was just everything. We would check for radiation. I mean, the whole thing. Um, if finally, instead of me coming to a point where I felt completely healthy, instead, I got diagnosed with cancer. I had actually become quite weak already because from all the fear and being tired and eating purely uh, vegan food, which for me, just eating raw vegan doesn't suit my constitution because I grew up eating hot food and I craved hot food, but I denied it because I, I really believed, I started to believe that cooking foods kills all the nutrients and it's not healthy and really I just took everything to heart. Um, now if you notice that when you research things on the internet, you will always find contradictions. The more you research, the more contradictions you find. Because I switched from cow's milk to soya milk. Within a few months, I found that soya milk causes cancer because it, the hormones, it, it, soya beans mimic your hormones or whatever. Um, so then I switched to rice milk and almond milk. So you know, it's like whatever you do, there's going to be something that contradicts it. Um, but when I got diagnosed with cancer, one thing though that I felt at the back of my mind is that, ah, now I get to take care of myself. Because up until that point, one of the reasons I was so tired was because apart from being tired and fearful about getting cancer, I was also always putting other people before me, including my best friend. I was always feeling guilty if I went and did anything for myself while she was dealing with her illness. That obsession with trying to heal the cancer was not gone. Now here's what started to happen next though, because now that I had a diagnosis of cancer, and now that I, had, I was well entrenched in all the cancer preventions and I started to make friends with people who were, who were practitioners of alternative therapies, um, they all started helping me and giving me even more. And so what I started to feel is that all these things I've been doing, I haven't been doing them enough. So I became even more vigilant, not realizing, it took death for me to, realizing, to realize it was because I was doing it all out of fear, not out of love. But instead, and this is a common thing we all do, we think, oh my God, what am I missing? What haven't I done? I've read all the books to try and prevent cancer. I've, I've done all the work. I'm doing the yoga. I'm doing the meditation. I'm doing the chanting. I'm doing the, the praying. I'm clearing my karma. I'm eating all the right foods. What am I missing? What more can I do? So there's this feeling of fear. And... So as I was going through that journey, on the other side though, because I now had an actual medical diagnosis of cancer, I had all the medical doctors telling me, you need to have chemotherapy. You need to have radiation. You'll be crazy if you don't do it. You'll die if you don't do it. So, and then I had my friends on both camps, on one camp saying, you have to do what the doctors are telling you because you're crazy if you don't do it. You'll die if you don't do it. And I said, my friend is having chemotherapy and radiation and she's getting worse. And then on the other side, I had the people on the naturopathic side saying, if you, uh, if you put those toxins in your body, you'll die. You have to do more of this. So anybody relate to that feeling? Yes. It's confusing, isn't it? And it makes you feel even fearful, doesn't it? This is why I advocate turning in and asking your body. But anyway, so subsequently, what happened is that my best friend did die. And my fear exacerbated even more, much more. Because I felt that I had already been doing everything naturopathic 
and I felt that um, the other side killed her because she was healthy. She was actually healthy, except until she discovered that she was out of breath. And, and then she deteriorated after that, after getting treatment. So that scared me so much. <laughs> so I was caught between a rock and a hard place. And I just fought to stay alive. I, would, I believed that my thoughts create my reality. And so I was so fearful of my thoughts. I thought if I am deteriorating, then there's something wrong with my thoughts. And I would suppress my mm -hmm. thoughts and force myself to think positive. Out of coming from a place of fear though, I would force myself to think positive. And, I, and finally, when nothing was working, I gave in and I told the doctors, I'm ready to do the chemotherapy. I'm ready to do everything. They said, we'll do it, but it's too late. You've left it too long. Mm -hmm. And so they started to give me a round of chemotherapy. But I continued to deteriorate until I was too tired and too weak to fight. I was just really too tired and I was in so much pain and so much discomfort that I felt I didn't have a choice but to let go. And I let go and I died. I went into the coma and was not supposed to come back and my organs shut down. And it was only when I was in that realm did I understand that the reason I got cancer was because every choice I had made was from a place of fear. It was from a place of fear. And that it didn't make a difference whether I chose to have natural healing or whether I chose to have chemotherapy. And um, it, it was just that I needed to believe that what I was doing was healing for me, or was right for me. We need to honor our choice of healing. We need to surround ourselves with people who will honor our choice of healing. It needs to feel right for us inside. It really does. The last thing we need is for people to come up to us and to say, that don't do that, don't do what you're doing. It's, it's gonna kill you, it's gonna kill you. So in terms of a support group, you need people that are going to support your choice of healing. So today my message to anybody that is going through an illness is it's not, your body is not a battleground. Your body is not something to be feared. Illness is not something to be feared. It's too bad we use the word illness but in actuality, your body is sending you messages all the time. Even your symptoms are messages telling you that there is something going on. Now, I, um, I don't want to say that, um, that we don't need doctors. We certainly do. But one thing that I have a problem with in our current medical system is that I truly believe that medical emergencies and accidents are in a different category than illnesses. I think they need to be separated as two different things. I believe that, they, that doctors and physicians and hospitals need to treat them as two different things. I think we need hospitals for accidents and emergencies, including medical emergencies, like if somebody suddenly has an aneurysm or a heart attack or anything like that, you know, and of course accidents. We need hospitals for that. But I think for anything else, like a growing illness, anything like a chronic disease, they should not be relegated to hospitals. I am actually very much an advocate for people who have an illness, a slow growing illness or cancer or anything, that a hospital is the wrong place for them. Because a hospital is very fear filled. If it were up to me, if it were up to me, and I had to help people who have cancer, I would have created something that I would call maybe a healing sanctuary. In a healing sanctuary, you would work with a coach, 
and the coach or a team of coaches. There would be a team of coaches for different things. The coach would work with you and ask you questions like, do you, do you feel that you have a purpose in life? Do you have people in your life who love you? Do you have people in your life who you love? Do you feel lonely? And questions like that. In fact, I can think of many, many more. Have you suffered a trauma recently? Have you suffered a breakup recently? I would ask these kinds of questions. And then I would assign coaches to help you through healing those particular issues. I would also ask, are you someone who gives of yourself until you get drained? but has trouble receiving? Are you a people pleaser? Do you have trouble saying no? I would ask those questions as well. And again, have a coach work with you to give you tools to be able to say no in a gentle way. And I would ask you if you loved yourself, and I would have someone work with you to help you to build self-love. Those are the things I would work on. And then, there would be a healthcare practitioner who would work with you on the best healthcare plan that suits your personality. If you are a fearful person who thinks that chemotherapy is going to kill you, then you are not a good candidate for chemotherapy. If you are somebody that needs nourishing foods, or if you are somebody that needs to eat hot food, if you are somebody that is used to eating a certain kind of way, you need a healthcare practitioner that will work with you on a plan that is designed for you to take you from where you are now to optimum well being. But here's the other thing I would also ask the coaches to do with you I would ask them to tell you, to ask you if you had a clean bill of health right now. If you had a clean bill of health and doctors came in and said, you are well, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? What are your plans? And I'll tell you why this question is important. Because very often an, an illness in our body is just a symptom trying to tell us that the life we've been living up to this point is not the life we came here to live. The life that you've been living up to this point has been someone else's life. It's been the life that you're living trying to please everybody else around you. And so you are not being who you came here to be. You're not honoring yourself. You're not shining your light. You're not gracing this planet with the person that your soul came here to be. And so if you are going to go back to being that person, you're never really healing what your body is trying to tell you. So the most important coach in this whole thing would be the coach that helps you figure out what makes you excited. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to figure out if I had a clean bill of health, what would I do with the rest of my life? What did I come here to be? What did I come here to grace the planet with? Who did I come here to be? What did I come here to express? That is the most important thing. Because do you know the biggest determining factor of your life and of your health is your will to live. It's your will to live. It's your reason for being. It's your reason for being. It's not whether you drink milk or drink soya milk or <laughs> almond milk or wheatgrass juice or take chemotherapy or no chemotherapy. It's none of those things. You see, we are so stuck in just manipulating the physical. We forget about the metaphysical. Because even people who are in the alternative health field are still very much, in many cases, not everybody. I know most of you in this room are uh, extremely open and enlightened. But in many cases, even alternative health is focused on food. It's focused on the physical. 
But we're forgetting about the metaphysical. Because even focusing on the food and changing the diet is still only the physical. To me, the metaphysical is far more important because when you've healed that, when you've healed that, you get a clear channel of what is right for your physical body or not. And everybody is unique. One size doesn't fit all. What's right for you may not be right for me. Some people may want chemotherapy um, because they truly feel, or some people may have a certain type of cancer that responds really well with that and they know it does and they're okay with getting it, but they might want to support their body with other things while they're getting chemotherapy. They may want to do the metaphysical healing, the emotional healing, and, and develop their will to live and their reason for being. So you can do a combination of all these things, of alternative, of metaphysical healing, the spirit, the soul, the emotions, and get conventional. But the idea is to get what is right for you, number one. So the number one thing is you need a team of people to help you to work on what is right for you. And number two is you need to heal from the emotional level and the biggest determining factor of your healing is your will to live. 